Do you want to take control of your financial future but don't know where to start? The folks at Noble Gold Investments know it can be confusing, so they will make it easy for you. Actual Noble Gold Investment customers are saying, the staff answered all my questions and helped me every step of the way. No pressure sales tactics, just honest guidance. So don't settle for financial uncertainty. They'll suggest options and see if you can diversify into gold and silver. Right now, Noble Gold Investments is offering a free 5-ounce silver America the Beautiful Bullion Coin for qualified accounts. Noble Gold Investments has an a rating with a Better Business Bureau and countless 5-star reviews. Why wait? Go to noblegoldinvestments.com now. That's noblegoldinvestments.com, the only gold company I trust. Hey, hey, Inspired Tribe, my fellow freedom lovers, John Nolan here. Thank you so much for tuning in to another Inspired Conversation. Uh, we just had his dad on the show for an extensive interview, and we're so happy to welcome back Gareth Ike, another amazing member of the Ike family. Gareth, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, mate. It's always nice to chat to you. Oh, always a pleasure. Um, <laughs> Gareth, I just read... You have this show on Iconic called Gareth Ike Tonight, and it says, you know, by the uh, outspoken and opinionated Gareth Ike. <laughs> and yeah. I had to laugh. It runs in the family, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess it does. Yeah. But they, I, I didn't write that bit of copy. That was that was done by someone else. And I'll be honest with you, mate, I felt really uncomfortable calling it Gareth Ike Tonight because it's like it's my name on it. And it just I just felt it's, it's I just felt like a bit of an ego trip but you know but everyone you know at the channel thought it was the best way to do it so we did it but yeah it, i'm kind of slowly getting used to it but it was like i think it's great yeah it's the show's going great and it's it's i think we, we've obviously because i was doing the right now show before and it, it needed a rebrand it would kind of it had sort of well it's funny actually because it was kind of almost geared to the covid era um and so that kind of you know has hopefully subsided but obviously it's back now so you know but the the kind of the, the branding of that was very much like you know being in a in a underground bunker in in France you know and you were the resistance and hence the sort of brick and the corrugated iron and you know just trying to have that sort of look really of like you know fighting from the underground to try and get this information out there, um, which we've sort of changed around a little bit now. But like I say, the Ron Rona's back, so you know we might need to go back in the bunker for a bit. And we're going to talk about that too. Um, by the way, I think it's it's brilliant to call it Gareth Ike tonight because you know you have your own tone, you have your own style, which I I love that. And I think people that come, you know, that have known your father and have come to know you, they appreciate that. And I've we've I've heard that many times over that they love uh, that you have your own tone, your own style. And I think it's brilliant. Uh, it's done brilliantly. I love watching it. I love hearing your take on things. Speaking of Thanks, which, um, as we're recording this, it is September the 11th, so it's it's the 22nd anniversary of 9/11. Uh, it's not going to air on on 9/11, but what what what's your take on, you know, 22 years later? How did you experience that? Because that's such an impactful event for so many people all over the world. It was it was a crazy day, and it's funny because it takes me back to having a conversation with my mum about JFK, and she said she knew where she was when she heard Kennedy had died and everyone in her generation could tell you where they were. And I guess 9-11 was our JFK, wasn't it? Like our generation. I remember it like it was yesterday. Um, I had a, a quite a big show that night in Portsmouth. Um, I was living on the Isle of Wight at the time and Portsmouth is, is the biggest city that's just across the water. And I had this big show and I was you know kind of a bit nervous, looking forward to it as well. So I was around my mate Josh's house and just, in the afternoon before we went to get the boat, just flick the, the TV on. And I was like, oh man, a plane's just, it, it's, it's crashed into the, into the World Trade Center. Jeez, that's awful. And then bang, the second one hit and we watched it in real time. And it was like, oh, that's not an accident, man. And, um, and you just knew that nothing was going to be the same really after something like that. It was, it was kind of crazy. And then that night, Portsmouth was under high alert because a lot of the British Navy are in Portsmouth. So, you know, where, where how much was this escalating? What was going to happen? You know, and so there was police everywhere and it was all just really strange. We played the show. Um, it's a place called the Wedge of Dreams. And so you had the venue and then attached to it is something called the Edge of the Wedge, which is kind of a little bar and you would do your acoustic sets in there. And then you would, and everyone was kind of in between bands was like, 
packing into that room, just watching the screens and then go back, watch a band back, watch the screens again, you know, watching it all unfold. It was crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Gary, your, your dad has been in, in, in many books, but especially in the last two books, really going deeper into the simulation, into the trap, into the dream, what happens beyond this dimension. And, um, you know, I would say publicly and on your shows, that's probably not a huge focus of yours, but how do you view the idea that we're living in a simulation and that this is basically the matrix all around us? I mean, on some levels, it's very obvious on others, you know, not so much. What's your take on this? It, yeah. It, it's, it's funny because there's, there's parts of it that you think, well, that, oh, well, that makes total sense now. Like that clicks, you know, but the bit that I got from the dream, um, was, the only bit that annoyed me was because I love getting out into nature, right? I love getting out into the countryside. I've done it already today. I've been out walking out in the countryside for a couple of hours. I use it to ground myself. And I will, you know, often like if I'm out, I'll go out into the garden and I'll, I'll you know, just stand on the turf with bare feet and just kind of ground myself a bit. So then the idea that nature is also a simulation, do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, mate, that was my, that was my real, like that was my real exactly. you know, connection, you know, don't take that away from me, man. But then, um, but then it's, it's, you know, it's a real interesting subject. And I think it's something that you, you probably couldn't have written those books 10 years ago. In fact, you might not have even been able to write those books pre COVID actually, because COVID woke up so many people to the fact that. You deserve the truth, but Big Tech does not want you to hear it. So we built our own Inspired platform on the inspiredchannel.com. To watch the full video and more, just click the link in the video description or the pinned comment.